The U.S. economy is spiraling out of control, unemployment is everywhere. Even though the police force has been strengthened, the crime rate has skyrocketed. This forced the government to build a massive prison, enclosing 138 square miles of a condemned factory town. This prison is operated under Wayland International and is being used as an alternative to the increasing number of death row inmates. This place is called the Sprawl. This prison is ruled by convicts who act as they please. The convicts revive the death race to determine who will be the ruler of the Sprawl. This race is illegal and deemed immoral by the government. Inside the Sprawl, the death race is being held. In this race, the Lord of the Sprawl, Frankenstein, has won the race seven times. This race is broadcast illegally via the dark web. Elsewhere, the employees of Wayland International led by Warden try to take down the broadcast, but the event is encrypted with codes that keep changing. They can't cut off the Sprawl's power supply, since the prison has its power plant. Inside the Sprawl, Bob and List are hacking the satellite to broadcast the death race to the world. Through the monitor, List sees a SWAT team has arrived to kill Frankenstein, but Bob tells List to keep broadcasting the race because this will make the race more exciting. In the arena, Frankenstein corners a driver and makes his car explode. Frankenstein wins the race again. Elsewhere in Mexico, Goldberg owns a betting shop, he collects money from people who are betting on the death race. Goldberg is the one who supplies the weapons to the sprawl. Everyone cheers for Frankenstein's victory, so far, no one can beat him. While everyone is partying, from afar the SWAT team starts shooting. Everyone rushes into the building, the SWAT team chases them inside. Inside, the SWAT team is surrounded by the prisoners, and suddenly Frankenstein appears in front of them. Frankenstein orders the prisoners to shoot the SWAT team. This incident is being broadcast live. Some prisoners arrive with chainsaws, then these prisoners butcher the SWAT team. A prisoner beheads one of the SWAT members and hands his head to Frankenstein. Through the camera in the victim's helmet, Frankenstein sends a message to the warden that the police can rule outside the sprawl, but inside the sprawl, no one can get rid of him. Moments later, a helicopter is carrying prisoners to the sprawl. An officer says that the sprawl is not like any other prison. No officers are guarding that place, the place is like hell. Entering the sprawl is like a death sentence. One of the prisoners then asks him how to participate in the death race, the officer replies, if they want to take part in the race they have to meet a man named Bob. The officer provides the prisoners with a roll of coins to survive. After the helicopter lands, the prisoners walk out of the helicopter. Just as they come down, a group of men come shooting at them. The group is led by Johnny Law. Johnny approaches the two survivors, Corner Gibson and Gypsy Rose. Johnny wants to take the new prisoner's coins, surprisingly Gypsy dares to fight back, Gibson also helps by beating all Johnny's men one by one. After defeating everyone, Gypsy thanks him and leaves. Later, Gibson meets a group of women led by Bexie. Bexie praises Gibson's impressive fighting skill, she wants Gibson to join her. Gibson tells her that now he just wants to meet someone named Bob. Bexie is willing to take Gibson to meet Bob. Inside a bar, Frankenstein is scolding Johnny since he fails to steal coins from the new prisoners. When Frankenstein is about to beat Johnny up, Johnny sees Bexie escorting Gibson into the bar. Johnny tells Frankenstein that Gibson is the man who has beaten all his men to a pulp. Inside the bar, Gibson meets a bartender named Jane. Bexie says that Jane can help Gibson meet Bob. When Jane is asking about Gibson's origins, several people come to beat him up. But, Gibson managed to defeat them all. Frank approaches Gibson, he asks Gibson if Gibson is the one who has beaten his men. Gibson replies that he is only defending himself, it's not his fault if all of Frankenstein's men are suck at fighting. The angry Frankenstein then leaves. It turns out that Bob is sitting next to Gibson. He is impressed because it seems like Gibson is not scared of Frankenstein. When Bob and Gibson are talking, a truck carrying food supplies is looted by the hungry inmates outside. Bob informs him that the entire food supply at the sprawl is controlled by Frankenstein, he keeps the residents hungry to control them. Frankenstein's men are seen shooting at the inmates who are trying to get the food supply. Bob invites Gibson to watch a qualifying match for the death race, it's called Death Match. Gibson meets List in the match, List tells Gibson, the only way to enter the death race is to win the death match. It turns out that Gypsy is participating in this match. In this race, the participants ride a motorbike, but if they fall from their motorbike, other inmates will appear and beat them to death. The participants try to kill each other, someone knocks one of the participants off his bike, and then they beat him to death.
Then the remaining two participants will fight each other, one on one. Gypsy Rose stabs her opponent viciously. Gypsy manages to qualify for the death race. After the game, Bob tells Gibson not to join this race if he doesn't have guts. Jane appears and invites Gibson to stay in her house since Gibson has nowhere to sleep. In her house, Jane asks Gibson if he wants to sleep with her, but Gibson refuses her advance. Jane smiles and lets Gibson sleep on the couch alone. The next day, the list takes Gibson to see Bob's factory. Bob produces his fuel here. That's why Frankenstein doesn't bother Bob. Bob is willing to supply the sprawl's fuel needs and in exchange, Frankenstein makes sure he has enough food and safety. Gibson says that he is very ready to enter the death race. Bob laughs at that and tells Gibson to get ready for tonight's death match. In the evening, everyone gathers to watch the final death match. They fight over one remaining car key to participate in the death race. List contacts his old friend, Goldberg. List asks Goldberg to send some weapons and equipment supplies to the sprawl. List also tells him about Gibson. List believes that Gibson can make the betting market more interesting. The deathmatch is broadcasted live on the dark web. The rule is quite simple, all participants have to fight to the death to get a car key in the middle of the arena. The match starts, and everyone runs toward the center of the arena, some bombs have been planted in the ground, they will explode if you step on them. The participants fight each other ruthlessly. Gibson manages to beat them all, he also gets the car keys. But then, he has to face the butcher, a huge man carrying a sledgehammer and sickle. He immediately attacks Gibson. This guy seems pretty strong and can withstand Gibson's attacks. Gibson has a hard time fighting him, but he won't give up that easily. In the end, Gibson manages to defeat him. Frankenstein watches everything from afar. He orders his men to bring Gibson to him. In his room Frankenstein asks Gibson why he participates in the death race. If Gibson wins, he will become the ruler of the sprawl. Gibson replies if he hasn't thought about it, he just wants to join the race. Hearing his answer, Frankenstein is confused. Frankenstein tells Gibson that the sprawl is created as an alternative to the death penalty. In this hell-like place, the death race gives anyone a chance to become king. Frankenstein can survive because he has the ambition to become the ruler of the sprawl, without that ambition no one can survive in the death race. After leaving Frankenstein's residence, Gibson is picked up by Bexie. Later in the car, Bexie tells him that she despises Frank because Frankenstein has killed the people closest to her. Gibson replies that maybe he can make Bexie's wish come true in the race later. Gibson then returns to Jane's house, and he thanks her for everything Gibson tells him about his past, back then he only cared about his younger sibling, but then they were gone. After that, he had nothing to care about. Jane who is crushing on Gibson tells him if now he won't be lonely anymore. The next day at Bob's garage, Liz helps Gibson repair the car he won last night. Bob asks if Gibson has found his navigator when suddenly Bexie comes and offers to be Gibson's navigator. Bexie and her squad then help Gibson rebuild his car. They work together to install the weapons in the car. After the car is ready, Gibson tries to drive it. Bob explains that this race will last only one lap on a long track. Along the track, they will pass a group of inmates who hate deathmatch. Usually, those inmates will shoot at the participants. The rule is simple, whoever wins the race will be the ruler of the sprawl. That night Gibson tells Jane that he isn't lonely anymore. Jane is his reason to be alive. In the morning, many people come to Jane's house. These people are led by Frankenstein. Frankenstein reveals to everyone that Gibson is a special operative assigned by Wayland to kill Frankenstein. After the mission is over, a helicopter will come to pick him up. Hearing that fact, the angry inmates tell Frankenstein to kill Gibson, but surprisingly he has no intention to kill Gibson now. He's going to let Gibson join the race. His fate will be decided in the race. Everyone, including Jane, is shocked to hear that Jane has no idea if Gibson is a government spy. Bob approaches Gibson, Bob says that he doesn't care if Gibson has to kill Frankenstein. Bob will still be on Gibson's team because Bob sees great business potential in the race later. Bob tells Gibson to get ready. In Mexico, Goldberg sets up the betting market for the upcoming death race. Everyone is getting ready for the death race. The event is broadcasted live again. Eleven participants will take part in the race. Gypsy Rose appears driving her Mini Cooper, and Gibson is getting ready in his Camaro. Then Bexie comes to see Gibson, 
Bexy says that she doesn't care that Gibson is a spy, as long as they have the same goal, to kill Frank. Bexy will help Gibson by becoming his navigator. Then Frankenstein appears and introduces Jane as his navigator. Frankenstein wants to see whether Gibson has the guts to kill him if he has Jane beside him. Elsewhere, the warden is watching the race to make sure Gibson kills Frankenstein. The race starts. At the beginning of the race, Frank immediately hits Gibson's car. The participants are free to shoot each other since there are no sensors in this race. A participant who rides a Vespa tries to shoot Gibson. Bexy then gets out of the car and throws a grenade at the Vespa driver. Let's blow some shit up. Elsewhere, Goldberg bets all his money on Gibson. He is so sure that Gibson is going to win this race. Someone is targeting Gibson, but he is hit by another participant behind him. Bexy wants to fire Frankenstein with a missile, but Gibson forbids her, and Gibson will find another way. Behind the hills, a group of inmates appears and starts shooting at the races. Johnny retaliates back, then he starts shooting at Gibson who is in front of him. Bexy throws another grenade but misses. One of the participants then shoots a hook at Gibson's car, then Gibson leads the participant into a tunnel. In the tunnel, the two participants get out of the car to kill Gibson. Gibson throws a match to the gasoline-filled floor and burns them alive. Bexy appears and shoots them to death. Gibson continues the race. In the front, Gypsy is competing with Frankenstein for first place. Behind him, a mine explodes, forcing a car to stop. The two participants get out of the car, and moments later, a group of inmates surrounds them. They are the convicts who previously looted the food supplies, but these two participants shoot them. They want revenge. Since he is far behind, Bob tells Gibson to cross the broken bridge. He tells Gibson to jump over the bridge so he could catch up with Frank. But he sees Johnny blocking the way, Bexy then comes out and shoots at Johnny, making his vehicle sway, and falls off the bridge. Bexy removes the rear shield to reduce the car's load, and Gibson accelerates his speed and jumps over the broken bridge. Unexpectedly, Gibson manages to cross the broken bridge and continues the race. Goldberg is convinced that Gibson will win. Surprisingly, Gibson manages to catch up with Frankenstein. Gibson almost overtakes Frankenstein's car from behind, then Frankenstein starts shooting at him, damaging Gibson's car. Gibson and Bexy get out of the car to check the damage, and it turns out that the car's fuel hose is broken. In front of them, Frankenstein turns around, he wants to hit Gibson with his car. Suddenly Gypsy appears and crashes her car into Frankenstein's. Then Gypsy gets out of her car. Knowing something is wrong, Bob tells List to stop the streaming. This makes Warden unable to see what's going on inside the track. Unexpectedly Gypsy shoots Frankenstein mercilessly and kills him instantly. They see a helicopter coming to pick them up. It turns out that Gypsy is a spy who is also assigned by the Warden to kill Frankenstein. She tells Gibson to get into the helicopter since their job is done. Seeing Jane who is injured, Gibson chooses to stay. Through the comms, Bob tells Gibson to wear the Frankenstein mask and become the ruler of the sprawl. Without Frankenstein, there will be chaos here. Gibson takes Frankenstein's jacket and ring. Gibson then puts on the mask and finishes the race. The live stream starts again, and Goldberg and the Warden are furious to see Frankenstein wins the race. <laughs>